Hi, and welcome to Talking with Felicia. On today's show, we're going to be talking to Bob Levy, and he works for ChildShare. Now, ChildShare is an organization that deals with foster kids and adoption. And I want everybody to open up their hearts and their ears and listen to what Bob has to say about his organization, how they help children, how they help families bring children into their hearts. You may not be born in my womb, but you're born out of my heart. Bob Levy, thank you so much for coming to Talking with Felicia. It's a so pleasure. So tell me about ChildShare. What do you actually do? Well, we uh, recruit and support families who mm -hmm. are interested in fostering adoption. So if so, I'm kind of confused. If I wanted to adopt someone or, or be a part of or have a foster child, would I go to your agency first or would I go to the county and say, hi, I'd like to adopt a, a, a child or a foster child? How does that work? Well, it would be smart. You could do either, but it would be smart to go to child share first because mm -hmm. child share would help you navigate through that process mm -hmm. because it's a big process. And uh, to go with the county, that may not be the choice for you. Maybe an agency would be the choice for you. So we can help you make that choice. So what do you mean by a big process? Why does it take so long to adopt children or have, be a foster parent? Why does it take so long? Well, because first of all, those children... Wait, are, let, me, let me restate okay. that. Okay. Why does it take so long in today's society? Because now that everything's on the Internet, put somebody's name, social security number, all of that should happen quicker. So why does it take so long? Well, because those children who are in the foster care system have been detained by the Department of Children and Family Services. Mm -hmm. So basically, they're a ward of the state. And there's lots of um, uh, red tape with that. There's a lot of liability. Uh, the parents still have rights, but the child is a ward of the state. So they're entrusted to that child. So they have to make sure that a foster parent, that they go through certification, their background checked, all those things have to happen because, again, the state's going to be liable for the uh, welfare of that child. So now they do a background check. I mean, what yeah. else they do? A background check just to find out about their life, their past. What yeah. other process? Um, you have fingerprinting. Uh, you have to go through a certification process, which means uh, usually is anywhere from four to six weeks and training. Now, what's you. the certification process? Okay. You're training them in becoming a parent, beginning mm -hmm. CPR mm -hmm. certified, what else? Well, yeah, that's right. Um, uh, CPR is a separate thing, but being certified, they want to make sure that you are um, prepared to take on a child. So is this like going to classes? Going to classes, exactly, okay. yes. So you do your fingerprinting, you do your background check, and then you do four to six weeks of classes that the county deems fit that you need. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. And then what? Uh, let's see. You're going to have a home study. They're going to mm -hmm. come and check out your home. Check make sure out it's your safe. home and make your sure. living. Right. And you have to have a bedroom for this child, or mm -hmm. does the child, can the child share a bedroom and a bed in the bedroom with other kids? Up to two years old, the child can be in, in, in your bedroom. At that point, they need their own child, uh, their own bedroom, or they can be in a bedroom with... But they can share. They can you know, share with uh, share. right with the same uh, same sex same sex basically mm -hmm. uh, up to five year old uh, uh, it can be another it can be a boy and a girl but at that point they have to be same sex. Now, what particular services do you offer me? If I told you I came in your door, I'd like to be a foster parent, or I'm, I'd like to be a foster parent, then I'd like to move into adoption. What do I need to do first? How do I get my eggs in order? You know, oh. you always say get your basket in order first. How does oh, that work? Absolutely. Well, first of all, I'm going to ask you what kind of child you're looking for. Um, the what age. What do you mean? What kind of child I'm looking for? The age, the sex, the race. Yeah. If you're, uh, uh, for instance, um, some people are called to um, take on uh, medically fragile children. Uh, special uh, a, education. Okay. Okay. And those would have to go in, in to the county. Mm -hmm. um, some would uh, maybe not like that, or maybe uh, it has to do with where you're located where classes are. I would set you up with uh, an agency in your area so you wouldn't have to drive all the way across town mm -hmm. and you'd get better service, uh, that social work would be more uh, readily available. Mm -hmm. So it's that kind of thing. That's the first thing we would do and talk about what your plan is, what your vision and what your desire is. So from start to finish, how long does it take? Well, it can go, usually it goes from three to six months, maybe up to a year, depending. Three to six months. Now, where are these kids in the meantime? They're in, uh, they're in foster care already, in some form of foster care, and that's the problem. Now, what if your last name is Winfrey? Okay. How long is this process? <laughs> like Oprah Winfrey? <laughs> Yeah, I, I'd like to know. Is then the you process... probably don't have to wait at all. You... <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Is the process uh, shorter, smaller for high-profile people? No, it really isn't. That's just a joke. Um, but it, the reason it takes a while is because, you know, there's... Um, you so have... you're saying if Oprah wanted it, she'd have to wait, you know, six yeah. months or a year? She, okay. Well, she'd have to go through the process. Now, with her schedule, it might take her that long because mm -hmm. she may miss some classes. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to get on in that module and take those classes. And okay. if you miss it... 
you've got to do the next one. If your right. house isn't in order. So it doesn't you know. matter how high profile you are, you still have to go no. through the whole same process as everybody else. That's right. Now, you may not know this, you may. Why do most celebrities always go overseas to adopt a baby? Because I know here in, just in California, I was reading your brochure and it's saying you had like 50,000 uh, orphan kids here. Mm -hmm. And we have orphan kids right in our backyard. And I know what probably helps because when they're sitting home at night watching TV, you have some celebrity pulling at your, 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 your heartstrings because you got this little kid crying and skinny and carrying on and real little and they're thinking, I need to go get a child from over there. We need to help people in our own backyard. There's nothing wrong with going overseas, mm -hmm. but I think our backyard is big enough that you can help the kids here. Some people, some people go over there and they get pick four, or five, six kids. Mm -hmm. What happened to kids here? Well, I can tell you on on two fronts. Uh, most people go and adopt kids overseas because there's little risk of them having to return the children. Once they bring them back here, chances are the parents can afford they're going to keep it. Yeah, mm -hmm. and they're going to spend a lot of money. In the case of a, a, a high-profile person, it's a lot of money. Oh, what? What's a lot What's of money? money? I think it starts somewhere around fourteen thousand dollars and can go up to like forty. So that sounds like paying for the kid. Do you have to pay that much here? No, no, no. You don't. You don't what pay do it all by? here. So uh, unless there's lawyers involved and it's a private adoption, there's that so many facets. Like you're paying for the kid if you're going overseas. If you're starting at fourteen thousand dollars. It's all about legal costs. It's all about travel costs. It's all about those things that they end up paying that kind of money. So it doesn't. You're not paying for the kids. No, okay. not <laughs> not but to my knowledge. But it sounds that way. Yeah, uh, you know that that's a whole. <laughs> It's a whole nother adoption market. A uh, <laughs> whole nother show. But I know nothing about. Okay. Um, but I can tell you that um, for those high profile people, I'm, I, I would imagine that part of it is because if they were to adopt or to take in a foster child and the family to get wind of it or anything, they the publicity could be horrendous. Mm -hmm. So I think they, they really probably have to go out of the United States mm -hmm. to do what they need to do. Mm -hmm. So that's, a, that's just a guess. But... So you're saying Child Share is more of a, a middle ground organization that helps you. It's like in the middle, one hand's going this way to the county, one hand's going this way to the to the family that wants to adopt. We we link the two together, absolutely. You yeah. know, I really wanted my audience to know that uh, the reason why I found Bob Levy because Bob Levy and Child Share comes to where you're at. They come into your church, and they do a presentation in church. Mm -hmm. And that right there, starting a foundation with someone, whatever their religion may be, to me is a good foundation to starting with the parents that they're getting, whether it be Christians or whatever religion they be, that you come in and do that, to do a presentation in church. Now, whose idea was that? Who said, you know, we got to tap into Mark that's not being tapped? You want, to, you want to hear a really wonderful story? Yes. The, uh, the person who founded our organization, Dr. Mary Rotzin, she was a, a student at Fuller Theological Seminary, mm -hmm. and she was um, going for her degree in uh, clinical psychology, mm -hmm. simultaneously going for her degree in theology. Mm -hmm. She was, uh, and this was the time uh, during the crack academic, mm -hmm. epidemic in our country, and she had to go down to a place called McLaren Hall to get her uh, uh, degree in psychology, right? And she was just horrified because at that time McLaren Hall is a county place where they would detain these kids and hold them until they could find foster homes. Mm -hmm. We did not have foster homes to take these kids um, that were there and mm -hmm. she walked in and there were kids in the hallways that were sick and that were um, not being taken care of and she was mortified. She then <laughs> went to the churches as she was going for her uh, theology degree and she reached out and she said, you know, we got to do something. And she linked the two together, which is really miraculous. And she started the first child share family, foster family at that church. And that's how it all started. You know, just grassroots. Uh, I think she started in a garage mm -hmm. with file boxes in a garage and just uh, one family at a time. That's how they now, do it. Now, does the county like working with your organization? They love do us. They open, mm -hmm. Are they open to you? Absolutely. And uh, just it's been wonderful because the county has said to me, uh, and it, it will say the same one, you know what, we make terrible parents. We need your help, mm -hmm. and they need our help. They're trying so hard to deal with uh, the kids that they have, and they can't. Mm -hmm. And they realize that the church is a wonderful resource. You've mm -hmm. got community. You've got people that are of like mind. You've got the resources. You've got the uh, you've got the venue. You've got all these things that can help a community. And and actually, that's the way it's always should have been. But we didn't do it, so government has stepped in, had to do it, and now we're going back and saying, you know what? This is where the community starts right here. Now, where 
what churches, what type of churches do you go to? We go to any that will uh, actually uh, invite so us out. So it doesn't matter called... the religion, you just go to any church? Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. I, I, I respect that because I don't think people realize how hard it is and how many children are actually out there. Now, when a person says to you, you know, they want, you know, this age, this sex, this race, um, <laughs> How do they do it? He's coming out. Listen, I want to adopt. Uh, I want a black kid. I want him to be two years old. It's fine. I mean, that's there's nothing wrong with that. Um, we adopted uh, my daughter because we had two boys, and my wife wasn't going to take a chance on having another boy. So she point blank said, "I want a little girl, <laughs> and uh, don't call me with a little boy." I want... <laughs> So that's just the way it is. You know, so that's okay. God's going to give you what he thinks you need to have. That's right. You know, so I can definitely understand it. Because if you had two boys, you know, she needs someone to pal around with. Oh, there'd be no uh, tea parties, no pretty dresses. If we had another boy, exactly. it'd be Boys Town. So what services do you offer? Once a parent comes into your door, what services do you offer them to help them in this process? Even though it's a year-long process, what particular services do you give them? Because, well, you know, they kind of you kind of hold their hands. We definitely hold their hands, and it's really a lifelong process. We have families who've been with us and have long adopted, and they're still part of our family. Mm -hmm. So we never let go of them. Uh, and we uh, basically, the services we, we provide are the, the uh, education, mm -hmm. the advocacy. We'll step in if they need help during mm -hmm. this, you know, this arduous process of being certified and, the, and all those things, as well as when they start to deal with the bio uh, parents, the court system, and then uh, in support groups, we support them. Uh, uh, we come alongside them when they need things. They get a call in the middle of the night and they just got a baby and they have no crib. and They've got no bassinet and they've got no car seat. Mm -hmm. We have a network of people where we, we get it going. We make now, those calls. Now when it comes to it. babies, are those the hot commodity? Yeah, babies are always the, yeah, the hot commodity, What's I it, would What say. are hot commodities? The black babies, the white babies, the Spanish babies, what are the hot commodities? <laughs> <laughs> One race, it's, you know. Uh, well, in this season, we're really hot on, uh, no. Um, I'm sure you go through seasons, but you know, right now, what season? You know, I really couldn't tell you because I deal with so many families. Mm -hmm. And for instance, there's needs. For instance, if a, a, a working mom like yourself, um, you know, she has a heart to take in a foster child, but she realizes that she cannot take an infant. She wants a school-aged child, mm -hmm. maybe who's just started first grade or something. So it really depends on where the family's at. If they're a new family and they, they don't have any kids or uh, it's a stay-at-home mom, she probably wants a baby, mm -hmm. you know, and something like that. Sometimes Do people wait longer time for babies? They usually have to, yeah, because they are in higher demand, yeah. Mm -hmm. What about 16-year-olds? Uh, I'm glad you brought that up because there's a huge need. Um, and quite frankly, we all want to be adopted. There's never too late to adopt someone. Um, there's a great need to adopt teenage kids, uh, and of course, um, they're not they as desirable. But are they so jaded that if you bring them into your home, they'll just cause chaos? They come with baggage usually, and here's the thing: sixteen. That's a lot of baggage. That is, and it, that's and a lot of baggage, and five or six foster homes. So I mean, how do five they or do six, it? maybe more? Um, but you know what? They still want to be loved. They still want a family, um, and they've been told throughout their life that they're not wanted, they're not needed, nobody wants you. And when you tell somebody that over and over and over, they start to believe it. And mm -hmm. you can't blame them. They're mm -hmm. victims. They were victims at the beginning. So um, I believe that love never fails. I think the, anything so you sow I. into a child's life, into a person's life, and you reach out and you say, I love you, and I'm going to love you no matter what you do, mm -hmm. I think is going to reap the And benefit. at that age, they're easy enough to be broken to be changed. You are too young mm -hmm. to not to change. Because you don't know where you're going to be at 26, at 36, at 46. You are too young to think that this is it. <laughs> this is what I can't understand with some of the older children. Um, now, I don't know if this is true. I didn't, uh, I didn't do any uh, big research on this. Because the one I did, this is what I kept finding out, that when they turn 18, they get 50 bucks in the door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, that's mostly the case. That's not usually 50, but it's, it might as well be 50. It's less than 50 bucks? No, it, you know what? A lot of times there's money that's been saved for them. Um, Who saves it, money for them? Well, actually, they get a little bit of an allowance um, from the state, and that's put away from them. Um, not like I would like to see, not with a financial manager that's watching their assets grow mm -hmm. so that when they go, they have a, a nice nest egg. Uh, it's usually... It's not 50 bucks, but it's not. It doesn't last very long. And most of those kids, they end up Are you homeless. Saying, is it less than 50 bucks? No, 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 no. Uh, I don't know. Again, it depends on how much they've set aside for them. Speculate. And I don't know that. 
maybe 5,000, maybe 500. Oh, okay. Maybe something like that. Okay, at least but, that's more a little bit reasonable. But you and I both know how long you would $5,000 go and, you know, if, if you have 18, rent. You can blow that. Sure. So is that car. really what happens? You know, here's your five grand and see Yes. You? That's and what do they do when they get to the door? They must stand there a while. No, they, they can't. You know, by law, they're, they're not allowed to. And that's, I mean, just stand outside the door drinking, which way do I go? Do I go yeah. left? Do I go right? I don't know what to do. That's right. And but these, a, most of these kids are educated. We've at least given them the high school diploma. 33% don't graduate high school. And 33% of them probably don't know how to read. Yep. Like I said, um, uh, over half of them end up homeless. 25% are incarcerated. Uh, only 3% go to college. And so that's the dilemma. And if they go to college, it's like that's, their ticket is paid for. Mm. Uh, what do you mean? Because if they, you know how when you fill out your college applications, mm -hmm. they want to know what your parents do. So if you know what your parents do, you got any money, then that's a loan. I mean, mm. that's a grant right there. Mm. Well, there are a lot of grants in place, and but you Already know what? They need them. parents who are going to take them. them down there so who and fill it out them? for them. It's, it's so sad to think, who helps them? You know, I Nobody. remember I was watching this show on television. It was about foster children, and the boy just, they gave him the money, and he had his small bag, and he stood outside the show. He stood outside the door of the agency, and he just kept looking up and down the road, and he didn't know what to do. And of course, like you said, he became homeless and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. But it's sad to think that, you know, we, they turn 18 and we just go here. That to me is a travesty all in itself. Does your agency try to help any the kids 18 or you just do younger than that? Absolutely, absolutely. We have a, a campaign that is uh, that goes into churches and we ask, first of all, that they will pray that a child will be adopted before their next birthday. And these are children that are a little bit older. Mm -hmm. And by getting their their picture, and just like Wednesday's Child and great programs like that, mm -hmm. where you get to see these children and see these are That's, great children. You need to see, and they need yeah. to come on at night, 12 and 1 <laughs> o'clock in the morning, because that is when you're yeah. half asleep and you're seeing this little <laughs> child that's so thin, and you're thinking, mm -hmm. I can feed that kid. Yep. Yeah, I got that's a dollar. Right. That's my coffee, you know. That's right. That's when it needs to come on television. It comes right. on like way too early, and then you blew it. Mm -hmm. You're too busy. Mm -hmm. So, um, yes, absolutely, that's a big push that we're trying to get people to, to do that because mm -hmm. it's so needed. And again, there was a young man who was 18 years old and he was so elated that he had just got adopted. He had a forever family, someone to be there at holidays, someone to, he could take his laundry to when it, mm -hmm. you know, he needed to wash his clothes or call up and say, what do I do? The bills just came in and I don't know what to do. Just someone mm -hmm. in your corner, you know, and uh, so it's never too late. Uh, forever families is what we're pushing. Now, yeah, do they family. make groups amongst themselves? Who's the that? kids? Do they become their own families? Not really. No, no. I think they mostly fend for themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And do they still split up siblings, or they, or they try to keep them together? Keeping them together is really the thing they want to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because that right there should just be, you know, it's hard to know that, um, you know, you want to take every kid if they're turning 18 and they're staying outside their door. That picture's in my head, and I saw this movie years ago, way before I decided to, you know, I, when you came to my church, I was thinking, I need to bring this man open, you know. <laughs> we're going into our holiday seasons, and people are having their hearts open and their pockets open. Mm -hmm. And, you know, take the time to contact Child Share and let them know how important it is if you'd like to be a foster parent or adoption parent. Mm -hmm. And then answer me this, how do you get, become a foster parent? And that foster child is there only for a short amount of time because their parents are trying to get their act together. Because you know, I know the courts are big in giving the parents second chances, second chances until they've exhausted their chances. So how do you, you know, how does a parent deal with having that foster child for like a couple of years and then you know, knock, knock, I've cleaned up my act, give my kid back. Well, a couple of years would be excessive. It doesn't usually, it's not, doesn't usually work that way. It can be 18 months though. But 18 um, months, you yeah, get attached. Yeah, you get attached. Especially if they're younger. They get attached to you. Yeah, they do. And uh, you know, all you can do is realize that that 18 months that you spent with that child was an 18 months that you gave that child love and that child received love. And it's really uh, about giving. And the fact that that child is going back to um, those parents, you can only pray that those parents have got their act together mm -hmm. and they're going to give that child a good life. But you have to go in um, knowing that that could happen and that you're there to love a child in that, in that span of time mm -hmm. and there's no guarantees. 
there never any guarantees. You know. You know what I can understand. You said earlier that a lot of children are in like four and five and six different foster families. So I'm thinking if they're in there and it's not broken and the family had turned crazy on you, why do you keep moving them? There's a lot of different um, reasons why. For instance, um, the first one is going to be an emergency shelter and they're going to get moved to one that's a little more permanent. Um, for okay, a, so that emergency shelter, that means they're, they're only a matter of weeks. Yeah, they're, they're just no to catch really them. There's no really attaching. There's just a whole <coughs> body, something just happened, we need to place this kid. I can understand that. Right. But what about when it's not emergencies, when you've been someplace six, seven months, and they move you, and the people haven't gone crazy, and you're not having a problem, why do they move you? Well, it could be, say, for instance, this child goes to a home that wants to adopt a child, and this child goes, but the child doesn't want to be adopted, or there's some problem. The child doesn't want to be adopted. You actually t They actually get to say, well, you know, these parents I want, those I don't. Well, I'll tell you the truth. I was a foster kid one time, and I didn't want to be adopted. I wanted to go back to my parents. So that's that's very real, and there's a there's a real commitment uh, to family. I figured you had a connection there. Well, yeah, <laughs> it's true. When you have so, a connection, you have yeah, a connection. Right. Um, so that's that could be one reason. There's various reasons, but uh, maybe they want to adopt, and the child doesn't want to uh, be adopted, so they have to move it to another family. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, and the reasons kind of vary, or maybe the child isn't getting along. Or working out, or the the parents are getting to the bio parents are getting too involved, and the child goes back, and then he gets you know. There's a lot of different things that can so happen. So once the, if the parents clean their act up, they go back, mm -hmm. and then if if they fall out, they can't go back to the same far home because they know the kids already in there, so they've lost their spot, so to speak. Well, they don't always know. Uh, it, sort of. Sometimes they can if the social workers got connection with that foster family. They can call them up and say, by the way, this kid is back. They're in back system. in the can system. You Would you? Yeah. Now, are these people getting any money? Any uh, assistance? Yes, absolutely. Because I think that's a big thing. Because uh -huh. it's it's a small fortune to raise a family, <laughs> and if you don't have a lot of money, uh, do you give them any type of assistance if they decide to? I know if they adopt, that means they're on you. But if they're still foster, how does that work? Well, actually, not. <clears throat> um, that's a very nice program that they have, and they um, give allowance. First of all, they take care of the medical and the dental. Yeah, you don't have no, to worry about that, that mm -hmm. whether the child is uh, adopted or, or not. Ever or 18 or 21? Um, well, it depends. If the child has to stay in foster care till 21, it's 21. Why do they would have to stay for 21? Because I thought they get booted at 18. Well, if they've got some needs, some sort oh, of special needs, needs. Okay. special needs, they would stay on. Okay. Uh, and uh, as far as the allowance goes, uh, this kind of stipend, as it were, you get that monthly, and again, that happens even if the child's adopted, mm -hmm. to help with the cost, offset those costs. So when does that end? Again, until uh, 18 or 21. And yeah. how much do you get? Well, it usually starts, and uh, you know, it, uh, don't quote me on this, but usually around the neighborhood of five or $600 a month. Do you think people do it for the money? They used to. In fact, a lot of homes were shut down because they were getting too many kids in there, and they were not good homes, mm -hmm. and they, uh, they were doing it for the money, absolutely. So now they've been much more stringent. And they've shut those homes down, and now, and that's another reason why a child share home is going to be a better home for a child because the their motives are intact. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is such a blessing to know that there's a program out there that aids you in the whole adoption foster parent process that even helps the kids when they turn 18 that they're not standing outside the door going. <laughs> You know, because it's, it's sad to know that they do that. I mean, your program is so wonderful. I was so, uh, when you came into my church, I was just low, floored, you know. I was thinking, I would love to do that. You know, I would love to do that. I'm not in a position to do that. I mean, you know, I'd have to get a whole new place just to get another bedroom. But, you know, it's, you know I thought about it. You know, before we had, before I had children, I thought about that. And then I just couldn't get over getting attached and somebody have to leave me because, you know, my nieces come around me and I get attached and then I hate, they have to go. Mm -hmm. But it's such a blessing. So if you have the heart to do this, open up your heart and don't think about the money. Everybody's going to worry about money. God's going to put you in a situation that you're going to take care of this baby that mm -hmm. you're going to you're going to provide for. Because that's the first people you think about. Am I going to be able to provide for it? Am I going to be put food on the table? Am I going to, uh, they're going to have food on the table? Are they going to have, you know, clothes on their back? You know, because nowadays kids weren't certain, weren't to wear certain clothes. Mm -hmm. You know, all these big basketball stars, they have all these sneakers that cost a small fortune. And when they were kids, they couldn't afford it. Mm -hmm. So it's like, do you, you think, you know, which I like to commend um, Shaquille O'Neal because you can buy sneakers in Walmart. You know, he's got a ton of money. He doesn't need Nike to put a slap, slap his name on it and cost $70, 80 $90. You know, mm -hmm. go to Walmart for 20 bucks, you get a Shaquille O'Neal sneaker. So I like that. I can commend him on that. 
But I like programs like this. I like programs that help children and foster children, and especially foster children right here in our own backyard in our U.S. of A. I think people see these commercials at night and they think that we don't have it, you know. And I must say, there's not a lot of commercials on TV supporting the children here, and that's where we need to go. Do you have any commercials on television, your organization? No, but well, we hope to. I'm letting you know right now. I would be so available to do any commercials that you'd like to do. Okay, you hear that? You know, I would be available to do any commercials because that's where it's at. It's mm -hmm. the advertising, those commercials, and it's not even in the magazines, it's in those commercials, they make mm -hmm. you cry. <laughs> you know, I walk that's around right. the streets of LA, go to different, look at this child, different ages, different sexes, because that's where it's at. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you can just fix one thing, what would it be? With? With Chelsea. An adoption, the whole process, if you can fix one thing, make well, it better. It's, it's, you know, I'd love to work myself out of a job. I think everyone in the county would love to do that. Um, it would be that we wouldn't have this, this problem where parents wouldn't be giving up their children. Um, I do this because there's a need and, uh, and my heart breaks for those kids. Um, but I would love that there wasn't a need, that parents did not look at their children as, as just an inconvenience and, and think they can just give them away and they can just carry on their lives and not consider that child's life. That's what my, my prayer and my wish would be, you know. You know, it's funny that you say that because um, we just had uh, voting and I think, I don't recall the proposition, but that proposition was talking about whether or not um, children should have uh, abortions or not two days for the parents. Yeah. And I remember, I'm sorry? That was Proposition 4. Four. Yeah. And it was a big thing, and I remember me and my husband was talking about it, and I was thinking of all these children here, all these children here. And I know sometimes if you made your mind, your parent can come in and change your mind, and then, you know, you're having a baby that you don't really want, that baby's not really taken care of. Mm -hmm. So do we say yes or do we say no? You know, mm -hmm. I know at USC uh, uh, about a year and a half ago, have the baby just put the baby in the trash because mm -hmm. kids don't understand that it's a big deal. Mm -hmm. So you really need to, when you lay down and you get up and you're pregnant, you really have to think about it. You really have to realize, you know, are you gonna bring this child in here? Are you gonna be with this child? Or are you gonna walk away? Because if you're gonna walk away, you may wanna consider abortion. And people don't like to say that, oh, you don't want, but you know what? The reality is we have two, like what you just said, Mm. Like you, what you just said. I'm not mm. saying abortion mm. is a type of birth control. That is not what I'm saying. Mm. But what I am saying is that have a thought out decision. Understand the repercussions of what this means. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thank you so Both. much for coming here. Thank you for having Thank me. Thank you, Child Share, for giving out the information. We're going into our holiday season, so please open your hearts and your minds and think about Child Share. Think about what they do for you and for children. There's so many children. There's like 50,000 children right here in Southern California that need a home. So open up your heart and open up your mind. And you can reach Bob Levy through, uh, you can email me at www.talkwithfelicia.aol. I will forward all of his information. His program is a great program. You can, more importantly, go and speak to your pastor. Ask your pastor, can he come in yeah. and do, he does a wonderful presentation <laughs> and he does a great job. And Bob knows how it feels to be on both sides of the coin. He has a yeah. foster child and he was a foster child. Yeah. Next time we're talking with Felicia. Every child, every child, every, every, every child needs love, needs love, needs love. Every child needs love. Hi, I'm Howie Mandel. I'm Sally Field. I want to introduce you to a very special place. Lark Ranch began almost 50 years ago. It was started by a group of visionary parents who were not willing to accept institutional surroundings for their developmentally disabled children. Lark is a unique facility with a community of individuals who are all special and contributing members not only of Lark but of the larger community of Santa Clarita. But they need your help to maintain this outstanding program and continue to deliver to its residents the 
kind of care that will help keep Lark Ranch operating for another 50 years. Please give generously. And let's continue the miracle of Lark.